Sunday, knowing that Christ is risen, Christ is our resurrection and our life, Christ gathers us to himself and allows us to celebrate his new life with him. As we come into the presence of our good and loving God, we turn to God, praising him with song, giving him glory as one community of faith. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that while that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Yeah. 
from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning, while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there, and the cloth that covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Not long before I was ordained a deacon, I met a man who had been a deacon for about 20 years. We had dinner together, and just before I left, he said these words to me that really stuck with me. He said, you know, after ordination, everything will be different. And it was. But as I reflected on what he had said, I realized, well, that's true of a lot of things. Everything can be different. When it comes, when it comes to a, a man and woman getting married, after the wedding vows, everything is different. When they're expecting a child, everything is different. When the child is actually born, everything is different. So many of these steps that we make in life, each time, everything is different. Well, as we know right now, everything is different. And many people say that things may never be the same again. Well, how true that is of the resurrection. For the, after the resurrection, everything was different because the resurrection changed everything. Pope Benedict XVI, in writing about the significance of the resurrection, said this, that the resurrection means God has acted. History does not go on aimlessly. God loves us. He comes to meet us. The more we go along this path in life and live in his way, the less we need to fear, and the more our hearts will be full of Easter joy. So let's put things into perspective. For the disciples, on Good Friday, everything had changed for them, but certainly not for the better. Peter, who had boasted that he would die for Jesus, denied him. Jesus was tried, convicted, and crucified. John, Mary Magdalene, and our Blessed Mother looked on helplessly as Jesus suffered and died. Then he was taken down, wrapped in a burial cloth, anointed and placed in the tomb. It seems that everything that they had hoped for was gone. And as Father pointed out in this homily last night, there was just darkness and silence. And yet Jesus had told them on numerous occasions that he would rise from the dead, that he would have to be killed and rise from the dead. Did they remember that at that moment? Well, let's think about this for a second. Even if they did remember, was it something that they would have been able to grasp? I mean, when Mary shows up, when Mary Magdalene shows up at the house, they weren't like, oh, you know, he said he was going to rise from the dead, uh, you know, and he's been killed, so that's going to happen. So relax, Mary, we're expecting him at any moment. I mean, they were as dumbfounded 
and as distressed as she was at finding the empty tomb. And if we go back to the beginning of Jesus' public ministry, the first thing he does is to invite the disciples to come and see where he was staying. In the Gospel today, Mary runs to the disciples to have them come and see where Jesus has left. And when they came, they saw and believed, even if they didn't fully understand. Well, we may not be able to come and go as we want right now, and we certainly saw a lot of that coming and going in the Gospel today. And as we've been reminded over and over again throughout this Holy Week, you may not be able to come here and see Jesus the way you're used to. But we do know that faith still requires movement. The disciples had to go and see the empty tomb in order to believe. When we move physically in any way, things change. Whether we get up or sit down or shift positions, our feelings change, our attitudes change, our perspective changes. Sometimes it's subtly, sometimes it's dramatically. In a much more profound and permanent way, the baptismal font that we will once again go before and Father will bless that water was the place where those who were baptized come to be changed. As we renew our baptismal vows and our baptismal promises today, let us not forget that baptism is not just a symbol of belief, but the water that is poured on us and the oil that anoints our head is a reminder that this is a radical change that happens to our soul. It is a change that no one sees, however, unless we allow it to be seen. Just as being a deacon or a priest or a husband or a wife or a parent is something that people may not always see or may always, may always recognize unless they can see it in action. In our words to people, we can either invite them to come and see or we can deny them the opportunity. In the choices we make, we can either bring them closer to the risen one in an encounter with Jesus, or we can cause them to take a step further away, or even to turn away entirely. And in our faith in the resurrection, we can either joyfully proclaim this Easter message throughout the 50 days of Easter, and then beyond that throughout the year, or we can say Happy Easter today, and get back to our regular lives and the things we complain about tomorrow. On Good Friday, we remembered that Jesus is the truth, but he is also the way, the way that leads to eternal life. Yes, there are roadblocks for us along that way, many of which we may be struggling with right now in the upheaval we're experiencing it. And yet there are other things we constantly have. We worry about ourselves, we worry about family members, we worry about the loss of jobs, and we worry about all sorts of other challenges in life. In fact, there may be a large stone that needs to be ro rolled away for us to really see and to really believe. But the stone was rolled away in history, and it can be rolled away for us today. God will work out his plan even if we don't understand. Just as it was for the disciples. They were changed first when the stone was rolled away, and they came and see that place where Jesus was not. But as Peter proclaims in the Acts of the Apostles, that change happened even more dramatically when they encountered Jesus, when they ate and drank with him, when they knew that they could connect the dots and understand everything. And that's true of us. We might not get it right now, but we'll be able to look back and see how God worked out his plan for us, just as he worked out his plan for salvation, a plan that seemed unbelievable when we think about the events of Good Friday. This Easter finds us being given an opportunity to change, to make the movement to follow Jesus more closely than we ever have before, to move along the path of life with the Lord of life, who conquered death and comes to meet us, to accompany us, but also, just as we heard Peter proclaim, to commission us to be his witnesses. What kind of witnesses will we be? What movement will we make? 
What kind of change will we allow God to work in our life throughout Easter and through everything beyond? May this Easter find us truly being willing to allow the resurrection to make a difference in our lives. May this Easter find us rejoicing despite the challenges that we face. And may this Easter find us always hopeful, hopeful in the truth and in the way and in the life. Jesus Christ himself, who came down to live among us, who died for us, and who rose again that we may have the hope and the joy of everlasting life. Be present by the mysteries of your great love and send forth the spirit of adoption to create the new peoples brought to birth for you in the font of baptism so that what is to be carried out by our humble service may be brought to fulfillment by your mighty power through Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, who by invisible power accomplishes a wondrous effect through sacramental signs and who in many ways have prepared water your creation Pouring of the flood foreshadowed regeneration, so that from the mystery of one and the same element of water would come an end to vice and a beginning of virtue. O God, who caused the children of Abraham to pass by shot through the Red Sea, so that the chosen people, set free from slavery to Pharaoh, would prefigure the people of the Baptist. O God, along with blood, and after his resurrection, commanded his disciples, Go forth, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Look now, we pray, upon the face of your church, and graciously unseal for her the fountain of baptism. May this water receive by the Holy Spirit the grace of your only begotten Son, so that human nature created in your image, and washed clean through the sacrament of baptism from the squalor of the life of old, may be found worthy to rise to the life of newborn children through water and the Holy Spirit. May the power of the Holy Spirit, O Lord, we pray, come down through your Son into the fullness of this font, so that all who have been buried with Christ by baptism into death may rise again into life with him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. My dear friends, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism, so that we may rise with him to newness of life. Now that we have completed our Lenten observance, let us renew the promises we made in baptism, when we rejected Satan and his works, and promised to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. And our response to the following is, I do. Do you reject sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? I, I do. Do you reject the glamour of evil and refuse to be mastered by sin? I do. Do you reject Satan, father of sin and prince of darkness? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, 
rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father. I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church, and we are proud to profess it through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. As we give thanks for the risen Christ living among us, we petition the Father to hear our prayers. For our church leaders, may they be fortified by the risen Lord's word working in them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For elected leaders, may God's wisdom guide them in their work to protect the dignity and sanctity of human life from conception through natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those afflicted with pain or sorrow, may Jesus, the divine physician, console and comfort them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who gather, may the Holy Spirit continue to increase in us the virtues of faith, hope, and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ, May they be embraced by the risen Lord this day. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of our parishioners, our parish staff, and our school, for whom we pray in a special way at this Mass, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now pause and call to mind our own personal intentions. For these, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving and merciful God, who raised your Son to new life, we ask that you hear the prayers we offer, for we bring them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all souls in the church. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For Christ is the true Lamb who takes away the sins of the world. By dying, he destroys our death, and by rising, restores our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that, from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by your same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection, and his ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death 
you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished with the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all your saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Peter our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The, the kingdom, kingdom and the power and the, and the glory are yours, and now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. You live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with and your spirit. spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. The body of
And let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal Mysteries, we may come to the glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As we conclude this Easter Mass, I really once again want to thank all those who helped make this Mass a reality, uh, from Jay Stone behind the camera and Christine Dion, to our wonderful musicians, uh, Jared, Frank, Dave, Keith, uh, really just helping bring uh, this celebration to life, to the ministry of our deacon, Joe, uh, to the service of Brother Damien, and the reading of Dan Love, and all of you who participate at home, knowing that we're all buoyed up by each other's prayers, by each other's worship of the Lord, knowing God's resurrection is present in our lives. Uh, and as we go forth from this Mass, we give you a special solemn blessing uh, to take with you for your families, for your homes, and for all the people you may touch in these days of Easter. Before that solemn blessing, I just want to take the opportunity to also thank Father Joe, who's come in here and really hit the ground running with doing a great deal uh, tirelessly, along with Brother Damien, to, to bring these liturgies to make this live stream happen uh, and uh, just, to, just to continue to, to pastor us in the way that he can. So I just want to thank him as well. Oh. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. May he who restores you to life in the resurrection of his only begotten Son endow you with the prize of immortality. Now that the days of the Lord's passion are drawing to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help, exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia.
Senhor.